All right, to break things down, we have our NFL analyst and former GM Rick Spielman joining me here on CBS Sports HQ. A couple things that we learned this morning. Uh, practice and joint practice has been canceled, non-COVID illness for Miami and Philly. But you have been at Miami practices over the last two weeks, Rick. What have you learned about this Dolphins team? Yeah, Dolphins are a very interesting team. Uh, I think Chris Greer did a phenomenal job. I got an opportunity to speak with him yesterday about putting a lot of pieces in place on that offensive side of the ball uh, to give Tua the best opportunity to have success this year. They're going to have a great defense. They played good defense last year. They kept their defensive coordinator, which was critical uh, when I talked to Chris yesterday about when they brought in a new head coach, they wanted to keep the continuity on that side of the ball. But on the offensive side, they look much faster than they did the year ago. You got Waddle, although he didn't practice yesterday, uh, who set the rookie receiving record, I think, with 104 receptions last year. You added Tyreek Hill and watching him he just plays at a different speed than everybody else when you're watching them out there uh, in practice. I think the biggest concern, a couple things that I have on Miami coming out was the offensive line. Mike McDaniel loves to run the ball, and they haven't been able to run the ball successfully yet uh, during the preseason. Now they say it's just because of the game planning side. Armstead did practice yesterday. He did not practice last week when I was out there watching the Dolphins. And then uh, Gusecki, how's he going to fit in this offense? He's not a run blocker. That's an important part of this offense uh, to, to establish a run game and what Mike McDaniel is used to. But it was a fourth down play yesterday, and uh, they went for it and to a hit Gasecki, and he made like an unbelievable one-hand grab to convert to fourth down and keep the drive alive. So there are some questions, but I think this is going to be a very good football team, and it does put a lot of pressure on Tua this year because of all the pieces around him. Pressure on Jalen Hurts on the other side as well. And a lot of the things you said about Miami trying to help Tua and having that defense, you could say the same thing about Philly as well. But if I were to ask you who's right now set up in a better situation to thrive between the third-year guys, Tua or Jalen, where would you land there? I think there are two teams that are mirror images of each other. and That's why it was so interesting to go out there and watch practice yesterday. And Philly has a great defense. Uh, they will play very sound. They added pieces at all levels of that defense. Uh, Hassan Reddick, you know, they went out and drafted two big time players out of Georgia and uh, Jordan Davis and uh, and the Kobe Dean. Uh, and then they added Bradbury to go opposite of Slay. So they've got that defense. They added playmakers on the offensive side, talking to Howie yesterday and how he pulled off that A.J. Brown trade on draft night, which was a rare occasion to do to give away a first round pick for a veteran and a big time player like that and then get a contract done after that. So. They are probably a little bit set up better because their offensive line is a little bit better for Hurst. Uh, but watching those two back to back, uh, Hurst may have a little stronger arm, but Tua has a little bit more of a point guard type mentality where all he has to do is, and the, what they're doing with their offense right now is dishing the ball, getting it out to the playmakers, and let the playmakers go. And you look at why both of them are under this microscope this year. They're both going into the third year. Uh, usually in NFL terms, a young quarterback in a third year is going to determine whether he's going to be your franchise guy or not. The other thing, and I asked Howie this, how important it is for Hurst to have because he has two first round draft picks next year. And I think from what I've seen so far, it's going to be a very strong draft class in, the, in next year's quarterback class. So both of them have a lot of pressure, uh, not only to perform because of what they were able to accomplish this offseason and upgrading their personnel, but they got a pretty strong draft class coming right behind them. All right, so again, taking a look at both Miami and Philly, similar situations, quarterbacks that need to prove it, so we'll keep our eyes out on that as well. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game, the highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics? Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.